On today's broadcast, South Korea celebrates its National Foundation Day. A U.S. think tank suspects North Korea restarted its Yongbyon reactor. And the 18th annual Busan International Film Festival began its 10-day run. This is KBS World Radio News. I'm Lauren Hardy. South Korea celebrated the 4,345th anniversary of its National Foundation Day on Thursday. A congratulatory ceremony was held in the morning at the Sejong Center for the Performing Arts in Central Seoul. About 3,000 people attended the ceremony, including key government officials such as the Prime Minister, foreign diplomats, and representatives from various sectors of society. The ceremony began with a pledge of allegiance to the state, followed by an introduction of the nation's founding, a speech by the Prime Minister, the singing of a National Foundation Day song, and the hailing of the nation. Congratulatory performances followed the ceremony. Prime Minister Chung Hong Won said in his speech that the nation has seen how small differences in opinion escalate into serious social confrontation in the process of conflict resolution. He stressed the importance of dialogue, compromise, consideration, and communication. This year is the 4,345th year in the reign of Tangun, the founder of the first Korean kingdom. South Korea and the United States continue the discussion on cost-sharing for stationing U.S. troops in Korea, and the Seoul government is known to have set aside 799 billion won for Korea's share for next year. According to data the Defense Ministry submitted to Representative Park Chu-sun, of this total of nearly 800 billion won, the biggest portion, over 340 billion, is allotted to personnel costs. Other expenses will go toward improving military facilities, defense supplies, and strengthening the two nations' joint defense readiness. Next year's budget for cost sharing of U.S. forces in Korea is 69.8 billion won less than this year's 869 billion won. But the figure is 8.6 percent, or over 63 billion won, more than the budget that was assigned for this year. The discrepancy is due to government tendency to set aside a smaller budget than the actual budget spent. A U.S. think tank says there is more evidence showing that North Korea has restarted its nuclear reactor in Yongbyon. The U.S. Korea Institute at Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies confirms that water used to cool steam from the reactor has been discharged. This discharged warm water is called steam condenser effluent. Satellite imagery shot in late August indicated a small amount of this water, but the latest photos show a clear difference. On September 11th, the Institute announced that North Korea appeared to have restarted its nuclear reactor, citing analysis of satellite images. White streams of water are captured in satellite photos taken on September 19th. The Institute confirms the water flowed into the nearby Kuryong River, and it argues this is proof the Yongbyon reactor is up and running. The 5-megawatt Yongbyon reactor can produce 6 kilograms of plutonium, which is enough to make one nuclear weapon each year. Based on an agreement in 2007 from the six-party nuclear talks, Pyongyang agreed to suspend its nuclear facilities, and it blew up a cooling tower the next year. However, this April, the regime declared to reoperate its nuke facilities, heightening the international community's concern. South Korea and Central Asian nations will hold a forum on boosting cooperation. The foreign ministry said the 7th Korea-Central Asia Cooperation Forum will open in Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan on Friday. Government officials and representatives from South Korea, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan and Tajikistan will discuss measures to boost ties in the textile, railway and forestry fields. On the sidelines of the forum, South Korean ambassadors to the five Central Asian countries will meet. A ceremony marking the opening of a Korean center at Kyrgyzstan's Central Library will also be held. Initiated by South Korean Foreign Ministry, the inaugural Korea Central Asia Cooperation Forum was held in 2007. It is a consultative body that meets on a regular basis to promote comprehensive cooperation and establish governmental, business, and academic networks.
You're now listening to the news from KBS World Radio's News Center in Seoul, Korea. A recent study finds that one in every two Korean women who use contraception does so due to the burdensome cost of childcare. According to a report by Kim Yoo Gyung, a researcher at the Korea Institute for Health and Social Affairs, 54% of women on birth control said they used it because raising a child costs a lot of money. The nationwide study surveyed 3,400 married women who currently use birth control. Other respondents said they used contraception to maintain their lifestyles and to have their social lives less affected. By income group, 21% of families earning less than 2 million won a month said their low income was the reason for using birth control. Meanwhile, 21% of high-income earners making over 5 million won a month said they wanted to lead a couple-oriented life. The use of traceable documented transaction methods, such as credit cards or cash receipts, is found to take up 89% of private spending. The Bank of Korea and the Credit Finance Association recently submitted data to Democratic Party Representative Lee yong sup showing that the use of credit cards and cash receipts accounted for 603.3 trillion won last year when total private spending came up to 680.7 trillion. The percentage has grown annually by 6 to 7 percent from 59 percent in 2007 to 71 percent in 2009 and 85 percent in 2011. Meanwhile, transactions made by cash have steadily fallen from 41 percent in 2007 to 15 percent in 2011. Foreign investors have continued net buying in the Korean stock exchange for 26 consecutive trading days. Their net purchased amount is nearing 10 trillion won. The Korea exchange tallies that foreign investors continued net buying for 26 trading days from August 23rd to October 2nd and purchased over 9.5 trillion won worth of domestic shares. The most popular share was Samsung Electronics with a purchase of 2.6 trillion won's worth during this period. Other hot sellers were Hyundai Motor, Hyundai Mobis, steelmaker Posco, and Kia Motors, which make up the top five in market capitalization. You're now listening to the news from KBS World Radio's News Center in Seoul, Korea. The 18th Busan International Film Festival began its 10-day run on Thursday. The opening ceremony will begin at 6 p.m. at the Busan Cinema Center. Following the opening, film stars and directors from home and abroad will participate in the red carpet event. Vara, a blessing, by a Bhutanese filmmaker, will be screened as the opening film. Starting on Friday, some 300 films from 70 countries will be shown on 35 screens in seven theaters throughout the southern port city. In addition to the screenings, various events will be held during the festival period, including a Korean cinema retrospective, master class, greetings by film stars on outdoor stages, and also the Asian film market in which major global film companies will participate. The annual High Seoul Festival, hosted by the Seoul Metropolitan Government, has begun. The opening program will be showcased at downtown Seoul Plaza, taking place on its center stage and outer wall of the old City Hall building, which is used as a public library now. During the festival, teams from home and overseas will showcase, for free, diverse genres of street art performances around 160 times. The festival continues through Sunday in multiple venues in central Seoul, including the Seoul and Gwanghwamun plazas. The U.S.'s Radio Free Asia reported North Korea introduced for the first time a tour product for foreign tourists to enjoy Christmas holidays in the communist nation. A North Korean tour agency based in Beijing, China, explained this new tour package will provide a unique experience of spending Christmas in North Korea. In the past, North Korea banned foreign tourists from entering the country in the winter season. However, the country has reportedly extended the tour period and locations this year to earn more foreign currency. Tourists who purchased the Christmas package will arrive in North Korea in late December and travel to Pyongyang and Kaesong. As of October 3rd, 
15 persons have made reservations for the package. South Korea's Special Air Force Squadron, the Black Eagles, will perform at the 2013 Formula One Korean Grand Prix in South Chola Province. Korean Grand Prix organizers said the aerobatic air show will be held at 3.30 p.m. Friday and 2.10 p.m. Sunday to celebrate the opening and closing of the international car race. On Sunday afternoon, a traditional Korean fan dance, military band, and honor guard performances will also be held to mark the closing of the race. Recapping today's news, South Korea celebrates its National Foundation Day, a U.S. think tank suspects North Korea restarted its Yongbyon reactor, and the 18th annual Busan International Film Festival began its 10-day run. And that's the news from KBS World Radio's News Center in Seoul.